Inktober. I officially have not done Inktober in three years, and so I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> in this video I'm going to be doing some planning, as well as talk about the different supplies that I will be using, and how I intend to go about this Inktober. I think it will be an interesting perspective from somebody who's done it in the past, but comes back to it after a really long time. It's definitely a perspective that I've never really seen before, and it's one that I would like to call Hello Inktober, my old friend. My main goal for September was to sketch out and plan my ideas, compositions and colour palettes, not go ahead and do the final thing, but just have everything ready in advance. This is a very different approach than I've taken in previous years. However, in previous years, I've always gotten burnt out and stressed around the two week mark, so hopefully having everything planned out in advance will help me not stress. I want to have fun with it, experiment, and also try making different forms of content. This is the perfect time to do that, since I'll have a lot of artwork to work with. In this clip, I'm going through all of the worked up sketches, they're all ready to be inked, and I'm so looking forward to October, where all of this artwork will be completed. The sketchbook I'm doing my final illustrations in is the I'm going to mispronounce this, Tumuata Square Watercolour Sketchbook. This sketchbook's paper has a 25% cotton blend that's cold press. The only downside is that it's 24 pages, I'll be using the back of every third page. This is so I can do all 31 prompts for Inktober. I really hope that this paper is up to the task. In the last few years, the official prompts for Inktober have not really sparked any inspiration, however this year when I looked over the prompts, a lot of them won me over. But there is a similarity to previous years that I would like to bring up. In previous years, I've actually made it about my character universe, and that is something that has stayed for this Inktober. I didn't want to go as abstract as I have done in the past, I wanted to be a little bit more literal but still have that room to play around with the prompt. For example, day 7, Drip, the character, Sonia, is holding an umbrella and the composition is the main focus. She's looking up where the rain drips down. I know in previous years I've been known for my use of colour, so hopefully I can still keep that up. But this year I definitely wanted to play around with more compositions. You'll notice that the difference this year is that it's a square composition instead of a portrait A5 composition. Even at A5, compositions can be incredibly intimidating. And I have a tendency to overthink things way too much. So downsizing the final pieces to a square composition in a smaller book allows me to still keep it simple, but allow me to experiment with different elements of each piece. And this is where I busted out my markers. Specifically, my Uhuhu markers. I do intend to use them for Inktober, I do not know how the final sketchbook's paper will deal with markers though, so I'm going to use them sparingly, <laughs> at least until I know how well the paper can take it. For Inktober I'm considering using my Roller and Kalinga drawing inks, as well as all of the supplies in my travel art supply kit which I featured in my last video. I'm hoping the markers do well on this paper, so I can use them as well, but I'm going to use whatever material suits the composition or suits the artwork feel that I want.
In my colour compositions, I'm mapping out the lighting and the general atmosphere I want the piece to have. These compositions are for the prompt Fortune, which is day 10. The purple and gold have this very mystical, magical sort of feel, which is exactly what I was going for. My technique when it comes to colour usually has a focus on contrast to create visual interest and depth. My use of colour usually limits the amount of colours that I have in a piece, as well as complementary colours. In this piece, I'm using complementary colours to really emphasise the contrast in the lighting and the background. I know this year I want to focus on also using different tones of colour as well, so cool and warm tones. That is also another way of contrast, which is something that I always try and put at least a little bit of in my pieces. You may have noticed in this video that there are a lot of different camera angles. That is because I'm trying to experiment with my filming style, and I'd love to know what you think of it down below in the comments. This is a very different style of filming and sort of editing for me, so I'd love to know what you guys think. To prepare for Inktober this time around, I actually went back and re-watched a lot of my old Inktober content, especially the tips and tricks. Since it's been three years, I did forget quite a bit of information, so thank you past me for making such an informative video. <laughs> I will leave a link to it in the card and down below in the description if you would like some Inktober tips as well. Yes, the video is several years old at this point, but it has some really, really solid advice. I have way too many unfinished sketchbooks, so instead of starting a brand new development sketchbook, I just used one of the current ones that I already have, that one being the Bailey J Witch Hat sketchbook that I started summer of last year. <laughs> so it's been a while and it's still not finished. Tis the way of sketchbooks. <laughs> this sketchbook might be over a year old at this point, but it is perfect for this time of year with spooky season right around the corner. So a third of the way through all of the Inktober development, I switched over from my sketchbook to an iPad Pro. I recently just treated myself to an iPad from a well-known secondhand store here in the UK known as CEX, alongside an Apple Pencil and a new camera. That's probably why at least some of the footage for this video looks, it looks, it looks so, so pretty. <laughs> I am still learning how to use this camera though, so bear with me. But the iPad with Procreate on it and the Apple Pencil combined? Why have I been holding off this time? I will never know because it is a game changer. And even though I've switched from my sketchbook to the iPad, I still kept the same sketching style in mind. Doing it on the iPad actually allowed me to experiment with the scale within the composition without having to erase it or just redraw things. Another advantage of an iPad is just the portability in general. Now I can say I'm officially done with the rough draft stage of Inktober, which feels amazing. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I still have work to do during October with doing a piece of artwork every single day of October, but at least I don't have to think about the planning stage. In previous years, that would have taken up majority of my day. And the amount of thumbnails I have over my sketchbook and two Procreate files is insane. I just finished counting and it was 156 thumbnails. So that means out of the 31 days, there is still 125 thumbnails that did not get used. 
At the time of recording this, I only had up to day 27, but as of recording this voiceover, the rough stage is done. <laughs> And the advantage of having so many different thumbnails is that if I change my mind, I can just go to any of the 125 other ideas that I just didn't use. Let me know down below in the comments if you're doing Inktober as well, because I would love to follow your journey. And if you'd like to keep up to date with my Inktober journey, I will be posting on my Instagram. You can follow me there at Snowy Mariner, and you can also subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the videos I post. But until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.